corner, welcome Taurus, 10,000 pounds, 1,200 horsepower of Chevrolet, driven by 24-year-old Jack Wilman Jr. In the opposite corner, the Challenger, the incredible grave digger of Dennis Anderson in one of the most popular monster trucks in the history of the class. Coming up, these two behemoths will lock horns for the U.S. Hoffman Association Championship. ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Kingdome in Seattle, Washington. I'm Brett Kepner, and we've assembled, along with a dozen of the nation's greatest monster trucks and over 40,000 fans, one of the greatest single showdowns in monster truck racing history. Plus, legendary stunt driver Brian Carson attains a speed of 65 miles per hour in his attempt to jump through a pyramid of cars. Welcome to the 1991 Monster Truck Challenge Series. Seattle's Kingdom. Two drivers have come almost 2,500 miles to do battle for the first time ever. It's Taurus versus Gravedigger. Certainly a spectator dream battle. And this is the man behind Taurus, Jack Woman Jr., and you're here for basically one reason. Yeah, I've uh, never had a chance to get at uh, Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger, and I'm looking real forward to uh, kicking some butt here at Seattle Kingdom, and it'll be a real exciting uh, evening. Well, all I can say is if, if he kicks my butt, it won't be a bowl of cherries. You can believe that. What's going to be the key to getting around a guy that you've wanted so bad? Well, the key is here, you uh, have some dirt doubles here in front of the first set of cars, and uh, judging that and not getting no air off of that is going to be a real key. I've seen Taurus run before. He's seen me run before, and we, we you know, we figure that, uh, that both of us will end up in the finals, and hopefully I can put him away. Me and Dennis both have two of the high-tech trucks out with a cool-over suspension, and it's going to be a real tough race. Because I know he's out to get me, and I'm out to get him, and we're the lightest weight race trucks here. Is this going to be a driver's race, or is this going to be a horsepower uh, WFO battle? I think this is a little of both, horsepower and driver ability, because the, uh, the guy don't want to hit this dirt mogul too hard, or it's going to send him into a bad bounce before he hits a set of cars. So it's going to be both horsepower and driver, uh, you know, situation. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to bury him. I'm going to try to put him away so I'm gonna hammer on it over 40,000 race fans here at the Kingdom in Seattle anxiously await the start of qualifying to determine the starting positions for the monster truck field believe me when I tell you that these fans are looking forward to a first ever Taurus versus Gravedigger showdown in fact on the starting line the very first man against the clocks in this qualifying session leaves the starting line Dennis Anderson over the first obstacle now over the club cars and on this 125 foot course takes it nearly perfectly Obviously, the crowd knew that the first ever Seattle appearance of this machine would be a barnstorming effort. And Anderson on the slow motion replay shows just how hard he can take the first hit, putting the truck through the air over most of the second half of the course. The elapsed time for the Grave Digger on the very first effort, 4.93 seconds, and that will set the pace for the machines to follow. On the starting line, the one and only Robert Parker, the AMPM boss out of California, one of the self Dalton team trucks. The Chevrolet leaves the starting line rather conservatively, but comes on strong in the second half of the run. And in this particular instance, conservatism during qualifying may help save the parts for the all-important side-by-side eliminations. On the very first hit on the crushed cars, Parker puts the big Chevrolet way in the air and lands the AMPM boss slightly sideways to record an elapsed time of 6.49 seconds. The crowd anxiously greets the incredible 1947 Peterbilt of the one and only Mike Welsh of Bellingham, Washington. A one-of-a-kind body style and an incredibly heavy machine that is still backed by the fans all over this part of the country. Welsh again using a little bit of conservatism to get across the cars and at least secure himself a spot in the field. But believe me when I tell you that driving this machine at almost 18,000 pounds is a job. It is a chore. The last time on the incredible Super Feet, 8.06 seconds. And that'll place him in the field right now with Dennis Anderson currently leading qualifying. But remember, we still have some of the biggest and best to go, including Taurus and Brian Carson coming up. to the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington as we continue action at the U.S. Harvard Association's premier championship event in the Northwest. We continue monster truck qualifying. 
the incredible Samson Wan out of the state of Alabama readies itself for a qualifying attempt. One of the very first of the monster trucks created in the mid-1980s is still a show stopper in appearance and obviously has more than enough power to make itself reckoned with in this field. The Samson machine comes down hard after a rather rough ride over the cars. The elapsed time, 7.63 seconds for the beautiful Chevrolet from the southeast. In the meantime, pulling up to the starting line area may well be one of the most unusual entries here at Seattle. A 1942 Dodge military truck driven by Terry Woodcock called Unnamed and Untamed. Woodcock in his first U.S. Auburn Association National Championship event of the season appears to have a few problems, but now gets back into the throttle. But a tremendous amount of smoke on the landing indicates the early model Dodge may have serious drivetrain problems. Literally a mushroom cloud of engine damage smoke as Woodcock takes the turn. Watching the slow motion replay underneath the front two tires. The truck lands, then the engine starts to come apart. You're looking at a $30,000 cloud of death smoke on that one. The elapsed time for Woodcock, 6.07 seconds, will get him in the field. But obviously, Woodcock is more concerned about returning for eliminations than anything else. But meanwhile, back on the starting line, the challenger approaches. Jack Wilman Jr. out of Granite City, Illinois, in the incredible Taurus Chevrolet, has his sights set on the grave digger. He must run quicker than 4.93 seconds to gain the number one qualifying spot in this battle. Roman leaves the line with a slight hesitation. Now, Brad puts it through the air. A wild sideways landing. And Wilman may well have threatened the North Carolinian and the great bigger for the pole. On the replay, watch the incredible air that Wilman gets sailing across the floor of the kingdom. The elapsed time, 5.07 seconds will not be enough to knock Grave Digger out of the number one spot. But it will set up each driver on either side of the elimination ladder and present a possible Taurus versus Grave Digger confrontation. Unbelievable job by both drivers. And as you can see, Grave Digger and Dennis Anderson leads qualifying at 4.93 seconds. Wilman number two at 5.07 seconds. When we return, it will be the first round of actual side-by-side -side monster truck racing here at the Kingdom, plus one of the greatest stuntmen ever, the legendary Brian Carson. Don't go away. <laughs> 